the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear friends, I would like to welcome you to the sixth day of this conference, When You Pray. To understand prayer in our dimensions, I would like us to begin to look at what Jesus taught as the basics for genuine and authentic Christian prayer. My dear friends, prayer is powerful. You know, most believers attempt to pray, but largely we shadow boss. We just dissipate a lot of energy and we try to pray based on how we saw those who led us pray. So we just follow and pray the same way and as a result, we dissipate a lot of spiritual energy, but there is very little result. For, for a long time, I thought that you, you learned how to pray by praying until I found out that Jesus did not just tell the disciples to pray, he taught them to pray. Yeah, for a long time, I thought that you learn how to pray by praying until I found out that Jesus did not just tell the disciples to pray, he taught them how to pray. So moving forward, I, I would like to, 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 to encourage all of us to begin to allow ourselves so that Jesus can teach us how to pray. Look, all through the three and a half years of Jesus' ministry, we see that he made mighty men by teaching them. He focused on teaching them. And it is, it is one of the mandates that God has given me as far as this ministry is concerned, this portal is concerned, that we should focus on teaching you. It, it took just one encounter to bring the Holy Spirit down, but it took three good years to change the mindset and the thinking pattern of the disciples. And, and if you observe, you will see that most often, when God wants to lift persons, he works on their mindset first. So after Jesus is rejected at Nazareth, he, he healed many people, he raised the dead, he taught his disciples on many subjects including fasting, the Sabbath, love for enemies, judging others, parables, he gave parables, he, he, he drove out demons, he calmed storms, he healed bleeding women, he, he, he healed a lot of people, the, the blind could see. There was a transfiguration experience, the feeding of the multitude with five loaves and two fish. Then the disciples began to realize that Jesus was operating on a different level because his prayers brought results. So the disciples at this time had observed that any time Jesus prayed, there was results. So the disciples came to Jesus with a request saying, Lord, teach us to pray. They noticed that there was something about the way Jesus prayed versus the results that came. You know, the issue here is not backsliding. Neither was it about prayerlessness. The issue was about inaccuracy in prayer. There was something about their prayer that did not produce results. But they, they noticed that the prayer of their master, the son of the living God, Jesus the Messiah, produced results. So they, they came to Jesus. They noticed that their prayer did not seem to command the power and the glory that was required or allocated for the prayer ministry. So they came to Jesus and they said, Master, teach us how to pray. So Jesus begins to instruct them about prayer. Now let's read from Matthew chapter 6 verse 5 to 8. So Jesus begins to instruct them about prayer. And Jesus says, and when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door and pray to your father who is on sin. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them for your father knows what you need before you ask him. The word of the Lord. Can you imagine? Jesus is teaching about prayer and just look at the picture. Disciples come to Jesus. Master, teach us how to pray. And Jesus is beginning to teach them about prayer. He's saying, and when you pray. And the first point of call is hypocrisy. That's the first point of call. Hypocrisy. When thou prayest, thou shalt not be like the hypocrite. Ha! What in the world is the relationship between prayer and hypocrisy? It means that the first thing that can block your prayers, the first thing that can serve as a barrier as far as your prayers ascending to the heavens is concerned, is hypocrisy. 
Hypocrisy can block your prayers from getting to God. That is why Jesus is about to teach them how to pray. And the first thing he's talking about is hypocrisy. So let's talk about hypocrisy. Because it can block your prayers from getting to God. Who is a hypocrite? A person who pretends to have something but doesn't have it. A person who pretends to be something but is not. So they may pretend to have virtues, moral or religious belief or principles, but they do not actually possess these virtues. So they love to stand praying in the synagogue. They love, they love to stand in the corners of the street that they may be seen. That's the motive. Seen and acknowledged by human beings. Seen and what? Acknowledged by human beings. It means that the hypocrisy is the motivation behind that energy that is dissipated. That even though it looks like there is a lot of prayer going on, the real motive for praying is so that people will see and clap for them. That you are some kind of prayer warrior. Huh? So Jesus is saying that when you approach prayer, resist, resist the temptation of trying to please people. Resist the temptation of trying to sign a spiritual register in the presence of people. There are many people today whose prayer life is down already. Down, down, ground zero. But based on their public shows and when people are around, you may think they are prayer gurus. Big deception, hypocrisy. There are many people who intrinsically do not have the passion or the revelation of prayer. But when we are before such ones, there is the temptation for them to dissipate spiritual energy to impress us. Provided someone is watching. Provided someone is watching. They will keep acting because, because of the assessment of people. They are, they are looking for people to clap for them. Jesus is telling you, resist that temptation. Prayer is a spiritual thing. It is more than the desire to let people see that you are spiritual. That they may be seen by others. Can you imagine? that they may be seen by others verily verily i say unto you they have received their reward in full what is their reward the perception that people have of you what a poor reward for such a sacrifice of prayer mind you he's not saying people should not see you that is not the point the point is that your motive should never be to try to use spirituality to attract some sort of respect or advantage from men the focus should be on god hypocrisy the first thing that can block your prayers and when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites. For our prayer intentions today, we are basing on Mark chapter 11, verse 24. It says, Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. Prayer intentions. Like I said, for the past days, you've been praying for your own prayer intentions. So pray for your own prayer intentions. As far as this year is concerned, those of you who have sent your intentions, I'm also praying for you. I'm, I'm supporting you with prayers. So continue praying about your intentions for this year, all the plans that you have, all the things that you want to do, all the things that you want God to help you with. Pray about them and God himself will come true for you. Let us pray. For healing, God, grant us healing. For strength, O oh Lord, grant us strength. For vision, O oh Lord, prepare us for surprises. For transformation, O oh Lord, grant us restoration. For messengers and your messengers, prepare us for surprises. For our community, O oh Lord, for our families, grant us unity and love. For acceptance of ourselves and others, help us, O oh Lord. For making room at our tables, grant us your spirit, O oh Lord. For truth, seeking the truth, grant us the spirit of truth, O oh Lord. For support, prepare us for surprises, O oh Lord. For your grace and favor, grant unto us abundantly. O oh God, walk beside us. God, walk beside us. O oh, Holy One, stay with us, even as we question and as we welcome, as, as we challenge and invite, as we discover and understand, as, as we see, as we touch, as we taste, as we smell, as we listen for the newness that you have awaiting us in this 2022. May we, your holy people, walk forward together side by side and grant us all the blessings we need. We make these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. My dear friends, the first thing that can prevent your prayers from reaching the heavens is hypocrisy. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites. Have a prayerful day. Shalom. God bless you.